after experiencing anxiety, depression, and burnout. Not once, not twice, but three times in my short career, <laughs> I realized there was just one person who could help me. Who do we think that was? Beyonce. <laughs> And so I bought a ticket to a New York concert. <laughs> Obviously. And I cried, no, <laughs> silly me, I sobbed. <laughs> For two hours, all through, uh oh, 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 to, I'm a, a diva, I'm a, I'm a, a diva, <laughs> to, I can see your halo. <laughs> And I was crying because I was exhausted. I was fed up of feeling that the life I was living didn't match the person I was inside. So I did what any millennial would do, started a blog. <laughs> and I documented my processing to get my mojo back. Hello, Mojo, this is Rayonce speaking. Where are you at? <laughs> and through this processing, I started documenting. How do I identify what I want? How do I say no? What are boundaries? How do I show my public self to the world in a way that feels safe? And it turns out other people felt this way too. And a lot of people connected with that. And this blog wasn't just for population one, Rayonce, anymore. Other people started emailing me. Thank you for sharing this experience. It's nice to know I'm not alone. All of a sudden, this blog became so much more than me. It became a community. I started meeting friends, many of whom are here today. I started to feel like myself again. I started to not only remember who I was, but discover who I was. And I started to share my story publicly by public speaking. Never met a microphone I didn't like, so it wasn't really a huge stretch, but it was to share my story. And slowly, out of the woodwork, organizations would ask me afterwards, would you mind coming to our workplace to share your story? And workplaces would say, would you mind sending a team to uh, share the story and how we might overcome burnout? Before I knew it, five years had gone by and I was running the business of burnout. <laughs> and all of a sudden I had this incredible team and clients to die for. <laughs> an amazing work and work that I'm proud of. And here's the thing, that story that built that brand, I don't relate to that story anymore. Because while that's the public story, the private story is, I've worked so hard to not be burnt out anymore. I'm no longer burnout rage. So the question that I'm grappling with now is if your identity becomes a brand and that brand becomes a public identity, what happens when you outgrow that brand, right? What happens when you can no longer relate to the public version of yourself that's out there? If true authenticity is your private self, and your public self agreeing to meet in the middle, what happens when you outgrow that identity? This was highlighted to, to me quite recently when I went to hire a sales rep, and she said no to the job. <laughs> and she said no, not because she didn't love the brand 
or the logo or the clients or the work or the experience or the people or the products, but because the person who rocked up to that meeting wasn't the person she fell in love with on stage. Burnout rage. The person who came to that meeting was a business rage. The person that I had to become to run that business. So that cognitive dissonance between what she was expecting and her version of my identity and who I have become privately didn't match. And that's the tension, isn't it? If true authenticity is having the privilege of sharing your true self with the world in real time, how do I do this when I'm growing and evolving? When my private identity is now a public identity and I no longer relate to that burnout rage? It's tricky. Bit awkward. I figured I started this publicly, I might as well figure it out publicly. <laughs> but the truth is, it's lonely business, isn't it? Growth, like ambition, is lonely. That's what they don't tell you about entrepreneurialism. That continual balance of, this is who I am, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> But I'm ready. But who am I really? Rayon say, who are you? Who are you really? <laughs> right? <laughs> I get asked a lot, you know, what's the secret to happiness? What's the secret to being fulfilled? And the answer is, if you must know, you have one of two options. Option one, instead of looking to the past for, I wish life was like that time, and instead of looking to the future of, why don't I have what I want yet? We must sit in our life right now and agree or decide that we are willing to accept where we are right now. And then rock it and enjoy it and get on with being an awesome family member and friend and partner and student and business person. Like, let's get on with living, right? And the other option is, and this one's a little bit more complicated, we have to do the work to grow. And let me tell you, it is work. Because while we all want to learn, not all of us want to, are willing to, or statistically will, grow. Because growing's hard, isn't it? It requires that, number one, we stop lying to the first person we start lying to when life doesn't feel so ace. Ourselves. Number two, got to tell the world about it. No thanks. How many of you wake up in the morning and you think, today's the day. Today is a day that I tell my friends, family, and those who know me, love me, trust me, respect me to say, hi, I am who you think I am, but I might not be tomorrow. Are we cool? Are we cool? How many of you feel like doing that? The third part to growth is that we actually have to do something about it. And true growth is work. It requires we act differently, speak differently, maybe truthfully, but it also requires that we sit in that awkward tension of what if people reject me? Is it safe to be my real self, my real, real self. Beyonce's husband, Jay-Z, raps in the song Most Kings. People look at you strange, say you've changed, like you're doing all this work to stay the same. And that last line, that last line gets me when I'm power strutting to work. Like I worked this hard to stay the same, but that's it. I've done all this work. For some reason, why do I feel trapped by what I've created? Why do I feel trapped? Where our identity is in the current, when it meets our future identity, that's where imposterdom, 
the voices of your inner critic, sometimes your own voices, come to play where our current and our future identity meet. It's that tension, isn't it? When we're in the comfort zone and we're in our learning zone, and just before we're in our panic zone, it's that awkward dance of, oh my gosh, what if they reject me? Am I really this person? Am I person? Maybe, maybe I should just pretend it. Maybe I don't need to wear a pink suit. Maybe it's not who I am anymore. <laughs> That's tiring and scary, isn't it? Yeah. This all came to a head to me recently when I got a little phone call from Ted. And I said, of course I'd love to come and speak. Yes! <laughs> and I said without even thinking, but I won't be speaking about burnout, burnout, burnout anymore. So then I had six weeks to figure out what my new identity was. <laughs> Nothing like a deadline is there, I suppose. <laughs> and that last six weeks has been horrific. I've been sharing with my friends, well, that's not true, <laughs> those who've signed the NDA. <laughs> What's really been going on for me? It's funny because it's true. <laughs> I've been having runs, well, not runs, stress cries, where I go for a run, but for some reason the phone comes in and saying, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> Maybe it's not the year to do a TED talk. <laughs> And it's also involved me saying to my fiance, wake up, wake up, I've figured out what my new identity is. <laughs> and her saying, do you need to have it done by Ted? Because <laughs> as a marketer, I'm thinking, relaunching without a new narrative, are you mad? Because branding a brand without a narrative is like a branding kryptonite. What brands are, are stagnant and they stay the same. The thing about identities are that they're continually evolving. So how do I do this? How do I break up with my public identity? Well, what I've learned through the last few weeks as a summation of my experiences is this. I gotta stop lying to myself. I'm not burnout rich anymore, and that's a good thing. Never said that out loud, thank you. <laughs> Number two, I need to share it with people I trust, respect, and value enough to allow it to be true, who allow me to be safe enough to do that, who are allowing to withhold their fears and anxieties to allow me to be my true self. The third thing I have to do, I have to take action. I feel that me and 500 of my closest friends talking about it out loud as an action. Do you feel like that could be counted as an action? Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> the last thing, the one I haven't quite figured out yet. I have to reframe my fear of uncertainty. What will my friends think, my family think, my team think, my clients think, Instagram think? What will they think? <laughs> and reframe that into opportunity. What if, what if I was living a life that reflected who I really was inside? Instead of worrying about being lonely, what if this is the greatest thing to happen to me? So the question I want to leave you with is this. Does my life reflect the person who I am inside? Does my life reflect the person that I'm becoming and will become? And if not, welcome to my life. <laughs> but imagine if I could. And more to the point, imagine if it did. Imagine if it did. Hmm.